late to sign up. Um, go ahead and go offline for a minute and sign up if you can. Um, and then in September, we have Brenda Swenson. That's an in-person only. And that one may be close to being sold out. Then we have October um, Dale Layton in, and that is October 2nd will be the demo, October 3rd through the 5th is the workshop. That one, I, I did say that one's in person. And then our last one for the year is Karen Knutson, which will be online only. The demo will be November 6th and the workshop is November 7th through the 9th. So hopefully you can join us for one or more. And now I'll introduce David. Uh, his bio didn't have a lot, but I will tell you what I what I saw there. It says internationally published and exhibiting fine artist David Lobenberg has over 35 years experience teaching both college and private art classes. He has he also has established a reputation for conducting well organized, energetic, hands on watercolor and drawing workshops across the United States and Canada. And speaking for myself, I've attended a few of David's workshops and find I, that I learned something new every time. And David is an, not only an informative, but also an entertaining instructor <laughs> and will keep you interested in the subject the entire time. So hopefully you can join us. Um, it starts tomorrow at 9 a.m. till three and it will run Monday through Wednesday. And David, with that, I will pass it off to you. Great. Thank, thank you, Vicki. Um, well, I'd like to say that that's a lie. I, I haven't had 35 years experience. Not at all. I've had more, <laughs> but it scares me how much I've had. So I keep it at 35. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. Well, welcome, everybody. And uh, let me start out with kind of giving you an idea of what I'm going to be doing. Um, I'm going to be doing an incredible photograph. This, and I won't show, I won't tip off what it is right now, but I think it was taken, it was in Life Magazine, probably in the 1950s. It's a little girl with her two front teeth missing, holding a kitten with his or her two front missing. It's as cute as hell. And all, all three of my subjects, uh, starting Monday, Tuesday, uh, Wednesday, they're all just really fun, fun photographs of pets and their people. So that's, that's what all, it's all about. And they're just great photographs. And actually, you can go, if you go to YouTube and look up David Lobenberg, um, I have two channels. I'm afraid to get rid of one of them because I may screw up the whole shebang. But there's one channel. Uh, so you'd have to investigate and kind of scroll through where I've got, I, I do one of the uh, uh, workshop subjects of a young lady and her dog. And it's titled, I think you guys might have posted it, the link. It's titled Ode to Joy. Some, so some of you may have seen it already. But we did today, we did post that one. Oh, you didn't post that one. Okay. No, no, we did. Oh, you did. Oh, good. Yeah. Yeah. Good, good. So, David, I am having trouble. I'm not seeing your work table. So your phone may have disconnected. Oh. I'm not sure. Do you see it anywhere, Susan? My phone did disconnect. Why did it do that? Hold on. That's interesting. Let's see what happened. The, this meeting is being recorded. Okay, got it. Can you see, can you see me again? Because I'm on on my end. Well, we Are can you see, muted? No, oh. we can see you, but not your desk. So well, you, this is that's, funny. It, it's like it's not connected. You can't see my desk at all. It's on my phone. I know, but you have to log into. Oh, the wait a minute. Okay, let me let me do this. That's David, you were so good at this before. Yeah, I know. Are you looking at me now? 
<laughs> yes, we're looking at you. Okay, let me do this again. Yeah, and it's, my phone's it shows that you're recording. Now, do you see my desktop? Yes, it's there. I see. Yeah. It. Come on, you guys. You see my desktop. Don't tell me you don't. Okay. I, can, I can you spotlight my desktop? Yes. There we there go. go. Uh oh, now I've got to change it to landscape. Is there no end to this? <laughs> the host has spotlighted you. Yeah, I know that. Okay, there's landscape. We'll try this again. I don't know why I did that. By the way, I've got my phone on. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. I've got my phone on. Um, do not disturb. Yeah. So I don't think that has anything to do with it. I don't want to hear phone calls or anything coming in. So anyway, we're on the right track. So this is one of the subjects that I've been teaching. Um, I taught this uh, a few weeks ago at the um, Huntsville Museum of Art. I had a workshop there. And I call this guy Sailor Boy. I got him from a wonderful app. There's a, uh, there is an organization out there, an online uh, uh, organization called Sketchy, S-K-T-C-H-Y. They leave off the E, Sketchy. And they have an app called Museum. You can get that app and people take photographs of themselves tw all over the country 24-7 all over the world for all I know, 24 seven. And the app is set up and all these people give you permission if you want to uh, photo, uh, you know, capture one of the photographs and put it on your desktop and make a print, you can uh, paint them. And then you can post it on museum so that they can see it and other people that belong to Sketchy can see it. So that's where I'm getting a lot of my uh, portraits now. I don't have to worry about any permission, nothing like that, um, because it's all free on this app called Museum. So this guy is Sailor Boy. I named him Sailor Boy. Now my method is, I will simply, I'll pull, I pull his image off onto my desktop, and then I made just a stupid, simple eight by ten print. By the way. He was in color. All, all the photographs, most all are in color. I changed it to black and white, so I'm not influenced by color because I am the California vibe watercolor portraiture guy. That means I do portraits with lots of expressive colors and not natural colors. So that's why he's in black and white. Uh oh, the host is, oh, good. So what I do is I put a piece of see through tissue paper on top. And I, I have uh, one of these new, uh, relatively new light tables. They're LED. You can have all the lights on. They're, they're very inexpensive. If you don't have one, they're only about a quarter inch thick. They're very lightweight. Or I could have taken this photograph um, and uh, plugged my computer into a digital enlarger but I don't have a digital enlarger. I really don't need it. I like this method. It's just as fast. So I make a print and then I put this on top and I just trace all the salient, um, val I call them value shapes because as artists, we don't paint people, we don't paint trees, we don't paint dolphins, we don't paint anything out there. All we're doing is we're painting value shapes. And that's what you train your eye to see, value shapes. And remember, value does all the work. I mean all the work, but color comes in and takes the credit. So you really want to, uh, uh, as a painter, and it doesn't matter what you paint, portraits, pets, uh, landscapes, still life, doesn't matter. You need to control values. Even non-representational work, you need to control values. So that's what I do. And then I will take this. This is my this is my master tracing. It's always there. I'm a believer in never ever doing a painting once when you can get better and when you can have fun doing a painting multiple times. Who did that with haystacks? You all know who did that, Monet. So 
if you screw up a painting or if you do a painting, it, it, it comes out good. And then you want to use a whole new different palette of colors and different brushes and different techniques of applying paint on paper. You don't have to redraw. You just trace from your master tracing. But how do you take this and blow it up if you want to work, work on a half sheet or a full sheet? Or I like to work on quarter sheets. You simply put the master tracing, you go to a copier place, or I have a, a small copy here in my studio, and I just enlarge or reduce it. So from this, I made an enlargement for painting purposes. It's two sheets of eight and a half by 11 that I had to tile together to make, well, wait a minute, <clears throat> this is not tiled together. So I must have made this at a copier place where they have larger sheets of copy paper. So this was my painting size. Oh, and here's another. There. So then what I do before I paint them, and you can see I've got the tracing on here, but I could literally do this without the tracing. I call this a mess around. It's an homage to, um, oh man, who was the great black blind singer? They did a movie on him. Ray, Ray. Charles. Ray. Yeah. Yay, I remembered Ray Charles. <laughs> um, he did a great song called The Mess Around. So this is an homage to Ray, Ray Charles. Um, and it's just applying, it's just applying colors at random and having fun and, and spritzing. I'm gonna demonstrate spritzing and picking up the paper and let all the paint roll around the paper. Basically what I'm doing is I'm just letting everything go for broke. I'm letting everything go for broke. And then when it's bone dry, I can put my, I'll put, I'll put my enlarged, Tracing, you can put it on a window during the day or a light table. And I put this on top. You can see right through it because this is a 140 pound cold press. Fabriano Artistico. That's all I paint on. It's, it's as professional and as quality as a grade of paper as you'll ever get. Arches, all the other paper professional grades can do no better. In fact, I like Fabriano better because it's, it's got an organic sizing. When it's wet, it doesn't stink. And what I like about it is it's a little more of a relaxed paper. Yes, while you're painting, it may buckle a little bit, but it's a lot more relaxing. And it's easier to flatten out later on. You spray the back of the paper, Put some paper towels on top, put it on a hard surface, <clears throat> put a bunch of books on top, any sort of weight, wait about 24 hours and you'll have it flatter than a pancake. And let me, let me tell you what I do. I use, Lasco spray varnish with UV protectant. Golden makes, uh, there are other companies, I think Golden's one of them that makes spray varnish, but this is the Mercedes Benz. This is the best. You give it one or two sprays and your painting is totally protected and you don't have to put acrylic or glass on top. And there are many organizations now, you look at the requirements, if you wanna enter a painting, you do not have to put acrylic or glass on it as long as it's got a varnish on it. And I, I've got one painting that I've sprayed, in fact, at Huntsville, at the Huntsville Museum of Art, I did a demo, I, it was sprayed, uh, and, and I slathered phthalo blue all over it, and I let it dry. But you know what, it can't sink into the fibers of the paper because it's got the spray on top. And then I took a sponge and I cleaned off, I, oh, I could have put it underneath the, 
a tap of, of running water. And all that phthalo blue just swished right off and it was back to its original. So it's a good thing. Why should we watercolorists have to put crap on top of our painting that affects, that, that emits reflections and, and, and cuts down on the true color of your painting? Don't have to. I'm sorry, I get very passionate about this. My apologies. Okay. Oh, and here, now this wasn't actually, this wasn't a mess around. It could have been a mess around. This is the last demo I did in Huntsville, but it was all painted with, a, with flat brushes. I kind of, I don't know why I like to paint everything with a flat brush. You can use the flat of the brush, you can use the corner of the brush for details. I love, I love playing around. I don't do it all the time, but I love playing around and doing paintings with flat brushes. And I learned that you could do a painting with a flat brush from Stan Miller, very well-known artist and, and a watercolor artist and teacher. You can find some wonderful videos that he's done on YouTube where he talks about value and expressive color. So let me show you some examples of where you can go with this mess around technique. Now, if you want to, you could do the sketch first, but then do the mess around technique really loose on top. So here's one that I did where I did do the sketch. And I took a, I, I took a big flat brush like this and I'm doing this. I've got puddles of color. I work with a Magello Studio palette. This travels with me all the time. David, and, we have uh, a we have a quick question. When you, oh, I, don't when you any, I don't take any questions. Well, I'm sorry. No, um, I'm, okay. I'm kidding. You know I'm kidding. What's the question? I know, I was gonna give you a sarcastic answer, sorry. Oh, you were, oh yeah, you know me too well. <laughs> okay. Um, we have somebody asking when you, um, when you put your spray varnish on and you're gonna, I get, there, I'm assuming you're gonna frame it or put it in something, do you attach it to something so it's solid behind it like foam core or something? There are two ways you could do it. You can do anything, you can do anything. You can float it. You can mat it and put molding around it. Or, and you can see people do this on YouTube, you buy a golden, um, it, it, it's a golden medium that um, collage artists use. So it's a glue. So, you know, you make sure your painting's totally flat and then you can glue it onto cradle board. So now your painting goes on the wall just like any artist that does oil or acrylic on stretch canvas puts it on the wall. Yeah. You could even do a, a, a wrap around. You could paint the sides if you wanted to. Yeah, some people, some people do that. I do that. And I haven't tried the varnish, but I've done it with cold wax. So I'm going to try the varnish. Try the varnish. And I would yeah, highly recommend it. Definitely cradle board. That's a nice one. Yeah, cradle board. Yep. Yeah. So here's the before. Oh, look, and I, 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 as an artist, I personally embrace honking big um, blossoms. In fact, sometimes I'll apply the paint and then as it's drawing, I'll throw in clear water so I can get some blossoms going. But here's the trick. You cannot go beyond mid values. You cannot go beyond mid value because it's later on when you put on the mid to the darker values that are going, that's when you're going to emerge uh, your subject from this mess around. So let me show you what happens. There it is. Look at that. Nice and loose, expressive colors, mixing and mingling. You know, it's, it's just, there's just so much energy to this. But it's only because late now some some of the colors like in the hat you know I got some beautiful turquoise here, you know. 
I painted over with the darker values. However, in the hair, look, some of that turquoise is peeking out. And basically, the head stayed the same, the same colors. And I just took some dark colors to do the pupil. Oh, I did, I did do a, a, some dark color on the forehead. So I, I, I went over some of those colors. But you know, the those basic colors are still here. We've got we've got kind of a golden color and a, a turquoise and red. You know, that's there's the there's the uh, turquoise, there's the red the golden color. So it's a great way to start your painting really loose. It's a great way to get into expressive colors. Here's a fun one. This I took like a, a half inch brush and I have some puddles of opera, probably a little phthalo blue mixed with yellow to get greens. I don't, I don't buy any greens. I, I mix my own greens. I have a limited palette, by the way. I only have two reds, opera and alizarin red. I only have a yellow. It can be any yellow. And then I have phthalo blue and ultramarine blue. That is my palette. Why complicate your, your world? I mean, yeah, sometimes I'll, I'll throw in another color or two that I can't mix with these five. Well, hey, and think about it. These are the primary colors, red, yellow, and blue. You can mix hundreds and hundreds of colors just with these primary colors. It makes life a lot easier, and it gives you Boku experiencing mixing colors, which all artists should know how to do. Okay, so there I have uh, uh, all these different colored squares, but they don't go beyond mid-value. So then I go to the mid value to the darkest value stage and I paint in St. Nick. There he is. With all of these light, from light to mid value, kind of going across them for a beautiful, colorful, textural effect. I don't want to show that one. This one was interesting. This one just started out as a bunch of warm colors. And, and look how I, I, I'm sure I used some flat brushes, who knows? Look at the runs, splatters. Like I said, you can put in blossoms. And then with some middle to dark values, you know, the hair into the ear, the eyes, the eyebrows, the mouth where the, where the upper and lower lips meet, that nice dark value, nostrils and the shade underneath the nose, his face emerges. Now, I had white against this, but after the mess around was dry and after I put in these mid to dark values, I also put in mid, mid to dark value greens. Just to, I wanted to bring out that edge of the face. But look, look how just loose that is. Okay, so now it's time for me. Well, let me give you a sneak peek of what I'm going to be doing. Here's my mess around that I did two days ago and prep for this demo. So you can see there's the little girl and there's the little kitten. And I just... Well, you, you, you're going to see how I did it. And here's the photograph. Check out this photograph. Can you believe that? <laughs> that is great. I love the teeth. <laughs> this photographer just found a little girl that had a kitten. And by golly, they don't have... <laughs> they both don't, yeah, they both don't have teeth. teeth. <laughs> and look at the smile on that little kitten. Can you believe that? This is like almost a once in a lifetime photograph. Yeah. And it got into Life Magazine. And then the other three I've got in my workshop came from, came from uh, muse the App Museum. They're great. So let me put this aside. Let's see, I've got that and that. Okay. 
David, I, I probably missed it. Do you do the drawing before or after you do the mess around? You know, when I was teaching my workshops, why are you looking? Oh, I was, why are you looking at my fan? That's because I've got a black table. It's re and you, it's reflecting, it's a glass. Anyway, I used to insist that people do, and actually, you know, if you ever do a mess around, I would say you should do it before the sketch because I have found people just have a difficult, difficult time doing the mess around because we're all too controlling. We gotta control, we gotta control. You can control later after you've got these mid to light values down, but you don't have to do it in the beginning. That's a secret to uh, most exciting watercolors. The, the big shapes and colors, 90% of the time go in right at the beginning of the painting, they're loose. Um, and then after all that's dried, the artist will come in with those middle values and dark values and emerge the scene. The only difference with my mess around is I, I let go a lot freer. I just let it go. So I, I would, I, yeah, you could do the, the tracing first, but here's the problem. You're going to say, oh, well, gee, there's the white of the eyes. Oh, man, the, uh, the, lo the lower lip, it's, 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 there's not much color there. It's reflecting too much white light. Oh, the bridge of the nose. I'm going to lose the bridge of the nose. I'm going to, you know, we're, we're all taught, save your whites, save your whites. Forget, a, forget about it. Just let go. But, it, but if you had that drawing there, you're going to want to control it, I think, too much. Okay. And, and in fact, that's what I did. I will, yeah. I'm pretty sure the tracing was done, I'm positive it was done after the mess around drive. So let's do a mess around. And, and, and I'll let this dry, and I'm going to use it for an entirely different subject uh, sometime in the future. And it will be a, um, hey, this mess around could be done for landscaping. It can be done for animals. It can be done for still life, unless you're interested in natural colors. And I'm not. So... I'm going to get, oh, here, let me, if you hear a bird, that's my, my Audubon flock. You hear a bird song every hour. Okay. You know what? Forget it. You don't need to see this. I'm just going to put it on the paper. Watch this. There's some beautiful opera. You know what? Maybe I should put some opera down here. Any way you want to put it on. You gotta you you want to work relatively quickly like this. Because this has all got to be done fairly spontaneously. David, this is Susan, and your paper is not wet, correct? No, you could do it wet on wet. That's a good question. You could do it wet on wet. Um well, I'm just gonna have some fun here. There's no one way to do a mess around. So you said, well, and you knew that wasn't wet on wet. Okay, well, all right, I'll put a little, let's do a little wet on wet now. Um, so those are basically the primary colors. Do we have to get any more complicated than that? Let's start out here. There's a lot right there. I'm gonna, I want to go this way. In fact, Watch that up a little bit, a bit more. Ah, that's better. That's looking good. You know, the, what I'm doing now is I'm, I'm thinking like a, a non-representational, or another word for that is an abstract painter. Now this, this goes, this goes right to mid value. That scares me a little because you don't want to get it too dark. 
Let's go. Let's do some different directions. Okay, and I gotta get myself some paper towels. This makes a real mess. Wipe some of this up, put it down. Gee, this might be good for a, a horizontal. Is that right? Yeah, horizontal portrait. You could even go in and maybe do a little of this. Like that. Let's have some go off the top of the page. Do curves like that. Okay. Let's get in real close. Look at that, man. Isn't that beautiful? Who needs, who needs pot when you can get high on looking at this? You know, I like to I like to turn on music. Oh, this 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 is perfect for sitar, Indian sitar music. Just, um, we, we'd like to remind everybody that is the views of the artist. <laughs> well, 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 now now it, 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 it's a good view. I'm, I, I, I well, oh, so what you're I'm, saying? Is I'm teasing. Rather do you'd rather have a joint than get high on this? Okay, we know where you're at, Vicky. And there is a place for that. Sometimes you can get high. Hey, I, I've never, actually, I, I, I don't do any of that. Um, not because I'm a prude, but um, I don't do it because I would just be sitting, I would have a, a some Skippy peanut butter and shoveling that in. And that's a waste of time. I'd rather be unstoned and get high, a natural high on my painting. We're teasing you. <laughs> I know you're teasing me. That's what I like about working with you guys. You know me by now. Look at that. I mean, that is gorgeous. I love what's happening over here. Now, this whole thing is going to dry lighter. So it's even going to get lighter. So no matter what I put, I could put a landscape on top. I could put a cat on top. In fact, I will show you. By the way, promote myself a little. I do online classes, uh, 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 video lesson classes. If you go to lobenbergart.com and I've just put on a, I've got a pet course number six, just pets, uh, cats and dogs. This was started out, that's a white cat, but why do you want to do a white cat when you can do a mess around and then with these darker values, like in the ears, the eyes, the nose, the mouth, around the, the legs and the paws, the background, and then you, from that mess around emerges a white cat. Okay. Here's another, now this was not a mess around. The other way you can go is you just invent your colors as you go along. So this is this is from uh, uh, my 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 pet course, my online pet course, where I did green fur at the top, some warm colors here in the middle, and some really energetic brush strokes down here, some splatters. And I pulled out this cat because I'm going to do the cat in my demo. I'm, I want to do those same colors, so I'm going to keep it up here and follow that palette. So now I need this back and it's time to paint. And with flat brushes. And actually I've got a larger, I may be looking at this as I'm painting. Yeah, there we go. Put this on top. Okay, now I gotta raise the camera a little. Otherwise, I'm going to hit the camera with my head. Okay. And I want to use flat brushes. So I've got one. I had another one. Where did that? Where did I hide that? There it is. I'll start out with a small brush. So now, conceivably, 
I could do this entire face just in one dark color. Sometimes you don't have to complicate it. But I'm thinking I want to give the cat green eyes, yellow green eyes, and I want to give her yellow green eyes. So I'm going to take some yellow. This could be any yellow. I happen to have bismuth. But it could be like a cad yellow light. It could be an aurelian yellow. It doesn't matter. Just a nice bright yellow. And let's tap in just a little bit of phthalo blue. Now I've done most of the big colors. So now I'm going in for the details, i.e. the facial features. So let me get in. You're gonna have yellow eyes. And the old cat's gonna have, the young cat's gonna have yellow eyes. That looks good. Okay, now I want, now for the cat's fur, I want all greens. So I'm gonna get some more yellow, I mean, uh, phthalo, and some bismuth yellow. That gives me a deeper yellow. Look at that, that's even deeper. Because my brush still had this paint on it and I, I popped it into the phthalo. And then I just want the, you know what? I don't want these colors here. I know there's a little ultramarine blue and I don't want that. So let me clean that up. Oh, you can't see this, can you? Here's what I'm doing. And I certainly don't want red in there because that's going to dull it down like crazy. Okay. Let's clean that. Okay, that's good. Let's just get some pure phthalo going on here. There. Push this back. So we're going to start the, and I, I'm not taking out a little tiny round brush, you know, those little tiny brushes. I, I hardly ever paint with those. I just want to get the basic value shapes. I don't want to think that, oh, well, gee, I have to do cat, tiny little cat hairs. You, you know, you really don't see individual cat hairs, but you, you do see shapes. And then, you know, I can get the illusion of highlights on hairs later on. Okay, and then I'm going to get it. I just have water on my brush now. I'm going to get it even lighter. And that comes all the way down to here where I trace. That's, that's still a little darker, that's good. Okay, and then there's a little thin line. It's the edge of his ear right there, voila. And let's get a little bit darker here in the ear. And then a dark edge there. I don't like to use a hair dryer because I want the paint to dry as it wants to dry. I want the pigments, the color pigments, to settle on their own volition. Plus, it forces me to move around the painting, which you really should do. You don't want to get too, my, too myopic and put too much attention in one spot. Now we have, we have a light, pretty light value right here on this ear. 
And then as it comes around, it's a little darker. I'm going to add a little bit of value here to define the tip of the ear. That looks good. I'm generally, I, I'm popping in a few darks, but I'm generally, I'm going from, from light to dark. Okay. Very light as we come around. Just these little dabs give the indication of cat fur. It doesn't take much. And always the viewer will take these little visual clues and they'll it will come across to them as cat fur. There. So you can see the head already starting to emerge. I mean, I'm not quite there yet. It's going to get a, a lot more dramatic as I move along. And then that cute, cute little nose. I just have a wet brush now. I got so much paint here. All I got to do is kind of pull this across. Okay. Do, do, do. Let's do this side of the face. I guess this is, I don't know, this is a tabby. A little dark there. This almost looks like he's got tiger markings, but I'm not sure. Now, you know what? I could take some just pure thalo blue here for the rest of his fur. Oh, I'm also going to show you something else. In fact, I might as well do it now. I have discovered chalk markers and they come in different colors. In fact, they come in hundreds of different colors, but chalk markers, they are described online or at an art store. They're described as containing colored ink. I don't think that's quite true. I think it's more like a gouache, which as you know, is watercolor. So let me let me make sure let me make sure I have enough. Oh, I'm looking at. Uh, let me see if I can get. Oh, here we go. I'm looking at this highlight here. Right there. On the ear. So I. So I'm gonna put in just a little bit of white here. And I will get a, a highlight. I can I could even do a little more in here. There. So instead of buying gouache and putting it on with a brush, I buy chalk, I buy uh, colored chalk markers. It's a lot more convenient. And you don't end up with little hard, hardened areas of, of um, gouache that you, it's hard to get off your palette. Okay, now I want to uh, get a little more drama. Generally, you go from light to dark, but we could, and we could especially bring out the side of the cat's face and her cheeks by rendering this dark value here, which is a shadow in the dark side of her cheek, and it goes up there's even a little bit of her hair there and dark side of her temple. So that's another good excuse to just dipping right into the well and getting some of that. Ooh, I had a lot of, a lot of paint on my brush. I don't want that quite that much paint. It was a little too watery. I want almost a dry brush because I can get a little bit 
you know, the side of the cat, you see little, little highlights of hair poking out. So the way you do that is you do this. You kind of tap it like this. There. See, look at that. Let me get, get you in close. Look at that. Voila. Now you've got cat hair coming out into that shadow area. Reflection on cat hair. For, okay. for your flat brush, do you like a synthetic or a natural hair? Or? Um, oh, that's a good question. You know what? What am I working with here? I don't even know what this is, but it feels good. I, I, I work a lot with Raphael. They're not real expensive brushes but they're made pretty well and eventually when they do go old they're not you know it's not like sable just throw them in the recycling bin and buy some more Raphael. so so you you would have to look that up i don't know what these are the, but they're a little they're a little they're not real soft i don't like real soft so they're 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 they, they've got more pushback and i particularly like to I, I sometimes will wet them with just clear water, not a lot, just a little bit, and I'll pull highlights off of hair. That's why I like them to be a little on the stiff side. You know that you can get really soft, flat brushes and then stiffer, and that's what I like. I like the stiff brushes. Okay, how about, I could do the same thing with the, uh, the paw area. Just tap it a little. There, now he's got some fur coming off his cute, cute, cute little leg. There. I'll get some green in here. Some phthalo. I'm leaving a few of these are called where you've missed spots. I don't know if you can see the little areas of, of where I've missed, so it's light. Those are called holidays. I, I, I think holidays are real important because it gives it gives your painting, it gives your painting energy. Let's see, her 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 side of her face comes in and then it comes out again. You know, when you paint, you want to be able to capture the contours that you're seeing. And then a nice curve on the chin. I can even change the color a little bit. Uh, let's see, I've got phthalo blue here. Why don't I go into some, some really dark purple? I happen to have some purple. Although if I just wanted to make purple from my palette of only five colors, I would mix either alizarin red or opera with probably with um, phthalo blue. Yeah, you can, I don't know if you can tell on your screens, but this is purple. In fact, let's lighten it up a little. I just have a wet brush. I can go back later and darken that up a little. There. Okay, I now I got to be careful. I probably shouldn't have gone that that low because I run the risk of um, running the palm of my hand over my, my hand over that. So while that's drying, well, I haven't finished up the top. Let's see. I'm I'm going to work on her eyebrow. It's a little thin here. And then as it goes around, it gets thick.
And this is her hair. So I want to feather it out. like that. That's her hair. There. Uh oh, look what happened. Well, while that's still wet, I should be able to cool that off a little bit. There. There's a little bit of green still there. It doesn't matter. By the time I'm done, you, you're just, it's just going to be part and parcel of the, um, of the painting. Okay. Now, with just a wet brush, I want to get, I, I want to soften this. I'm, I'm looking at this area right here going into the forehead. So I'll just, there and then back with thalo i want to do her upper eyelid and it goes right into the shadow there um, and then some pupil the pupil There, and a little bit of some shading on this side, and a little bit of there. What's that called? I forget. That dark ring around all of our eyes. There's a name for that. Is there a dentist in the house? There'll be a dentist. A, hyg a hygienist. Okay, very carefully. This is the other crease. Can, the... And there's an eye. It's called the limbo ring. Yeah, there's another word though. Are you it's talking a ring. about the iris? I think that's it. That's it, the iris. Yes, thank you. I know it was a pretty simple word. I just couldn't bring it up. Okay, I'm gonna have to let this dry. I, I, that may stay that value. It's a little, it's lighter than what's in the photograph, but that may look good. I don't know. I'll evaluate that later. Like I said, you want to move around the painting. Okay, now, huh, do I want to stick with green? Maybe, I, maybe I'm going to give her a warm eye. I'll mix a little bit of opera with bismuth yellow. We'll see where this leads me. When I would go on family trips, when I was a youngin, my brother, my mother, my dad, my dad would we would take a day trip. This is a long time ago when you could easily travel from Stockton to Sacramento on a two lane freeway. We go to San Francisco. And um, my father would get lost going up and down the hills. He'd get lost. So my mother would say, Art. Don't you think you should stop and look at a map or ask directions? 
And he would say, no, no, I'm just following my nose. And, 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 and he did just fine. So I'm kind of following my nose right now. Sometimes, sometimes it's not the best thing to do, but it sure is fun. And it will, and, and when it does work, it, it works quite nicely. So it, it's, it's more of a, um, you know, I don't have any formulas. I don't have any set formulas for my expressive colors. It's all done through intuition. I don't know any, I know ne next to nothing. I mean, I'm not totally ignorant, but I know next to nothing about um, color theory. I have some, I have met some people that are very good at it and they do beautiful colors, but I've also noticed that they're so good at it and so cerebral at it that their paintings are tight. I don't want my paintings to go tight, so I keep myself fairly ignorant. Now, okay. Much to my chagrin, I am forced to use a small brush but I will use a small flat brush because I just want to pop in a little, some little eyelashes there. And also on the other side, right there. And now I think I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to stick with the green because I want both eyes to be green. I'm going to stick with the uh, phthalo blue for the eye. And then it does mix. I'm going to mix that up. I'm going to dirty it up with a little of my red. I'm going to use um, a lizard red to finish up on this side of the eye. Hey, David, could you pull the photo down just a little? Yeah. yeah. Just, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's not too bad. Yeah, that's, thank you. Okay. Hey. Vicky, that's why you're the host. You're the brains of the out. I'm the painter. You're the director. That was Susan, though. <laughs> oh, was that Susan? Oh, well, she's good at the both of you are good at that. How's that for Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. And let's segue from that to. Now you can mix an orange. I can mix a beautiful orange with phthalo red. No, with um, opera. Let's put in a little bit more. I want it to be deeper orange. Ah, that's it. Okay. So I'm going to segue because this part of her upper lid is, is not as deep. So I don't want to have a, I don't want, I don't want to uh, continue the same, you know, I don't want a lizard in red all the way across. But as we come to the other side, we'll go back to a lizard in red because you can see, see how right here it's dark, it gets a little lighter and then it gets dark again. Sometimes I'm not a photorealist. I just want to capture the impression, but I do look very closely at my subject to see how generally how things work. If I just did a monotonous and same, same uh, width of line all the way across, it would look, it just wouldn't look right. It looked real dorky. I've seen people do that and it's not, not a good thing to do there. Now I've got a little traveling of some of the red here. I'm gonna leave that. That's not what I meant to do, but it may look good. I don't like to be perfect. Okay, now that's enough of that small brush business. So you can see 
the eyes have emerged from the mess around. Now I'm and now again I'm going generally from from light to dark here. I'm laying down. See the lower lid here. She's got a prominent lower lid, but it starts out. It's it's light. It's not too dark. So I want to get that in, and then after it's dried, then I'll do this darker part. Let's get some yellow in there. Oh, that looks nice. It kind of goes down like that. There. And this other side, that will be more green, a light green. <laughs> Whoops. In fact, all this could go... I'm just pushing it back, making it a little bit darker. I'm softening up the edge here. I'm scrubbing it a little just to soften it. And then I, I, I want to put just a little bit of tone where the bridge of the nose is. So I'll bring this across and then I'll segue into my warm color all the way across like that there. All righty. And I may use the white chalk marker for right here. We'll see. I got to set this eye into the eye socket. And the way I do that is there's a little bit of a little bit of tone or value here that goes just that I think just that mark right there might have done it there so you you want to get the roundness of the eye socket that sets the eye a little yellow there okay i got some green traveling in here i like that i'm going to leave that i'm going to let that go pull that out a little bit okay um Now I want to continue. I hope this is not too wet. I think I'll start down here first. We do have this deep shadow. Now that's pure thalo. I'm going to, I'm going to put in just a little bit of green now. Uh-oh, look at that. We'll see how that works out. That's another thing I wasn't planning on. It's kind of breaking up. There's a nice kind of hard edge here. There isn't here, but I don't like perfection. So that may come out looking pretty good. I'm gonna stop right there. This is way too wet. I should go back to the cat now. What are we doing with time? Oh my God, it's almost three o'clock. Well, I'm just gonna go as far as I can. I may not finish but I don't want you to miss anything. So we'll, we'll see. Um, Sounds great. Yeah, yeah, that, that's my plan and I'm sticking to it. Let's, let's work on the mouth a little. Look, this is still wet here. I know I'm gonna smear that. I'm gonna dry that, come over it later dark. So who cares? Okay, her lips, what color do I want her lips? I normally like warm looking lips. I think we all do. I think that's why they invented lipstick. That must be why they invented lipstick. You know what? I will mix it up with a little green. 
on this side. all with a flat brush. Now I'm going to lighten up her, and this is still wet, so it's gonna mix in with the opera. I'm gonna really lighten up her. Actually, it's gotta, it's gotta stay dark though down here. That's good. How'd I get that? I got some more. Let's see if that come off real quick with a just a wet brush. Yeah, that's gonna come off. What's the bottom of the back of your hand? What's that? Oops, sorry. I meant I said check the back of your hand, make sure you don't have paint on you, it. You know, that is excellent advice. In fact, that's funny. I just did a little mini workshop here where I live in Sacramento, and the same thing happened. And, 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 and one of the artists says, check the back of your hand. And sure enough, yeah, there was, there was paint. I guess that's the oldest trick in the book. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pop in just a little bit of yellow right there. I don't know that that's going to work. I, I can always paint over. In fact, that's probably a little, that's kind of cool. I'll leave that for now. I know I can fix it later. Okay, back to, let's do this crease in her chin. And then what we can do with just a wet brush, we can go to the edge and pull out some paint. So it goes from light, dark to light. Again, use that wet brush. I think I better go back to the cat. And I'm going to use a small flat brush. And I'm going to start to delineate the, um, the eyes. This cat's got those kind of Halloween eyes that you see. His, his eyes have not dilated. I guess cat's eyes dilate too. And now I'm going to go into the mouth. I got to be very careful and get those, those two, I can't call them canines, those two sharp cat teeth. There, right there. And that goes a little around the tongue. There's one. I'm glad this is dry because my finger's right in it.
And if I if I cover those teeth, they'll they'll be really easy to put back with a chalk marker. You can also get some chalk markers that have really fine tips. And the best one on the market is um, Signo. It's called Signo S I G N O Uniball U N I B A L L Signo Uniball white markers they're great do not buy do not buy a jelly roll they sell those at, a, at at the art store they are not opaque enough you know what i should have done i probably should have done a little bit of the pink tongue i could still do that later on okay now we've been diddling around with small little details. That 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 for me that gets a little frightening because the painting really we're not even through the halfway point. So I got to get to some larger colors. Can you see the cat? Ugh. I want to start on this side. See how it's all dark. I want to get that going. Um I think I'm going to stick with uh, the greens. So that starts at this at the ear here. Let me get really dark in spots. Now I can pull some of this. Then I, I want to bring out the cat's snout. Ah, there we go again. Got some paint on my hand. Of course, the worst color to get on your hand is thalo. That's good. And I'm going to be painting over this later a little bit. Okay, then with a wet brush, bring some of this up and dab it a little for whiskers. Get a little darker right here. Look at this, we can get it really dark right against his paw, and that's really going to pop out the paw. And it's good I didn't get the, the background any darker, because then it would have been difficult to pop out the silhouette of the cat. So that's good. Comes all the way around. Let's get it really dark down here. Ah, oh, they're nice. Then the other paw. Let 
right here. Well, let's do this first. This we want this to be darker. And I'm going to have to let that dry. But we've got this light area in here. Really press down on the brush. Then we have some tiger marks coming up from the forehead or up to the forehead. I'm kind of making it up a little. I'm exerting my artistic license. And this here has got to pop a lot more. It's so let's make this darker. And it's dark right down here. Yeah. A little more fur or indication of fur. Okay. This side of the leg, starting way up here. has got a sl slightly darker value. The front of the paw, we want to keep somewhat light, but see how I, I got that highlight there, right on the top of the leg. And what's happening with this leg? This leg, and I've, I've, I've traced it, it's got, it goes around like this, And connects there. So we've got a nice highlight here. And then we can, now I think this is dry enough where I can, I can do this stripe there. Let's bring that all the way around. Let's deepen here where they go into the claws. I love cat claws. I used to be afraid of cats growing up. I didn't like those, those sharp claws, but then I grew to love cats and their claws. And cats can be quite restful looking at you. If you want to go zen, look at a cat sleeping or have a cat on your lap purring, so much fun. Okay, the nose. The nose needs a little bit of dark right on this side. And maybe a little bit on here. I'm going to have the, this part of the cat go into shadow a little. It was too much of a straight line. There. That's better. So the back is emerging out of shadow. That looks a lot better. You know, every time you paint, 
there are always aesthetic decisions coming up. There's some white there. What color do I want that tongue? Well, let's let's continue to go around the tongue a little. This little bit of value, light value, is going to help delineate the mouth and push out that tongue. I'm going to get just a little bit darker. Come on. There. That helps. All right. Let's see, this has got a Okay, I can feel myself starting to overwork this cat, so I'm going to let it go for a bit and get back on the um, on the girl. Just one more thing. There. Okay, now let's go for some alizarin red with a little bit of green in it. And we're going to work on the shape, the dark shape. And we're going to go around the teeth. Uh. I'm going to pop in a little more phthalo blue. Now, it's real dark within the inside her mouth, but and a little bit of that darkness comes up to separate the teeth, but then as it continues, you get a lighter color for the gums, because you're getting into the gums, the upper gum of her teeth. So I think what I'll do, I'll just pop in a little bit there, and a little bit there. And then with a lizard crimson, we'll come up just a bit more, a bit more, okay. Okay, then This is a tricky part. Why am I talking too much? Nice and dark down here. Now I'm just going to take a wet brush because I don't want it too dark. And I'm just going to Bring that up. 
and I'm going to segue into a dirty green. And I can now go back to the nose area. I'm still moving around. I don't want to become obsessed with one spot. So working around her nose. We'll get some opera in here. Almost getting a lavender. David, someone's asking to if is there any way of showing the reference photo while you're painting? Yeah, the only reason why I wasn't uh, yeah and I can understand that here let me do let me do this yeah I was a little reluctant but it's getting drier now. And i'll put some protection on the cat can you see that. That look yes. okay yep that's perfect thanks okay. And some dirty red. I'll have to let that dry. You know, the thing I've, I've discovered over many years of painting and screwing up paintings is um, you got to be patient and let things dry. You know, especially in an area like this. Now, I will have to go back into it, though, because it's getting a little too dark. There. I need a little bit of light going around and above the upper lip. I'm just going to let that whole thing dry out a little before I go back into it. Now I want to do the nostril. Right here, it almost goes straight across. It's got a curve. I'm going to make sure my, 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 my I've got a flat because I want to get that curve that goes up like this. And that's got to be a little darker. But there's that convex curve there. And then here, it basically goes straight across. And then it gets lighter, goes around the nose like that. And that comes around the side of the nose like that. Now, we also have some value on the bridge of her nose. The highlight's more on the side here and on the tip of the nose, on the side of the tip of the nose. But this is so wet. 
I don't dare, dare touch that. So that's going to have to wait. However, with a bigger brush, bigger flat brush, see, look at this value I've got on the side of her cheek with a highlight above the cheek. You know, you can go crazy about this and you can blend too much. I'm, I don't want to do that, but this is too hard, especially down here. I want to, there. There we go. Soften that. It gets a little bit. Blend that out a little bit more. There. Okay. Um, and then we've got some shadowing right here. I think I can take some of this alizarin, maybe a little bit of opera. And that comes right off of Starts here. Then with a wet brush, I'll just pull it down and blend it right into the, the upper lip. I think I can even put a little purple in here, get it even darker. There, that's better. Now that whole area is so wet, I've got to let that dry. So how about going, how about if I go down to the neck? And I will take some alizarin red. Then just with a wet brush, just pull some of that, soften this a little bit. It goes right into her collar. That's her neck going into the collar. And soften this line a little bit. You know, uh, edges are very important. You've got hard edges lost edges, soft edges. Okay. I think I can now bring this shadow Then we got this dark area right here. I think I want that more of a lavender and her lower lip. Don't want that there.
then this comes comes up right here. I don't know why I do such a difficult smiling mouth like this for a demo, except I love doing mouths. So hopefully. Well, it looks good. I think it's looking okay. It's not perfect, but sometimes, you know, if I want to lighten up little areas and massage them a little, I wait until everything's dry and I do that later. Um, those are my final touch-ups. Get a lighter green here. This shadow goes right into the chin. Oops. Yeah, now we've got a dirtier red. It's... Yeah, that, that's okay. Okay, I think I want, I'm gonna pull off a little paint right here. There, okay, that's all got, that's all got to dry. And of course, we've got a little bit, take off some paint here. There we go. That that's what's bothering me, I think. Her lower lip has got to reflect a little light. Now I'm getting, I'm getting some glare. What if I turned off this light? That's even brighter. Yeah, I can see better. This is why I like a, uh, a fairly stiff brush because I can pull off paint better. Okay, that looks good. I don't want to mess around with that anymore. I'll overwork it. I'm going to come back up here and I can turn on the light again. Let that warm up and do. She's got prominent lower lids, eyelids. So that, that looks good. There. And the same side, the same thing on this side except with the green. Well, let's make it a little darker here. I think I'm going to push this back. It's thoroughly dry now, so I'm going to push it back with a little bit of a a wash on it there. Okay. Oh, good. I got plenty of time. You know what? How long have I been painting? I started at one thirty ish. Well, you started talking at 1.30, so I don't know. That counts. That counts. 
Okay. So talking, so 1.30 to about 3.50, what, about an hour and a half? Uh-huh. That's a big chunk of time. Or, or whenever you're done. Yeah, well, no, I'm only, I'm only, I, I'm always, I'm always giving people advice. I'm a teacher. I mean, I got to do that. That's a big chunk of time. And I have found that after about an hour of intense painting, it started out pretty easy with the cat. But then, it, you know, it gets a little more difficult as we're starting to pull out the values and developing the contrast. You know, this mouth is, uh, it takes a lot of concentration. That's energy. That's, uh, that's mind energy. And uh, that's another reason why, while I'm working on my paintings, I often will give myself a well-earned rest. Because if you don't, if you continue to grind away, you will start to make more and more mistakes and your painting will go downhill. In fact, and if you walk away, you come back to your painting, get out of the room, do something different, go outside and pull some weeds. Come back or do the dishes, come back, you see your painting with fresh eyes. Two things can happen. Well, a lot of things can happen. You can see where you need to correct things. Um, or you may even come back and you thought the painting was looking pretty bad and you were a little disgruntled and you come back with fresh eyes. And, and I know you've all have experienced this. You've done a painting and you come back several hours later or you've come back the next day and you've looked at it and you say, hey, you know what? That's not too bad. So this is why I like to take breaks. And this is another, another reason why I never, you know, in the past, I used to take a hair dryer. Oh, I'm not quite happy. Look how wet that is. I've seen people pat, 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 or bzzz, they're drying like crazy and they keep on forging ahead. And that's not good. This is not looking too bad. I'm not totally happy with it, but I'm going to just come back later. And maybe it may be good, maybe, or maybe I, I, I'll see areas where, okay, now I know what I have to do to make it look more natural. A little girl looking in, she's got a big smile and her two front teeth ain't there yet. All right, well, are there, okay, and this is a good time for me. Are there any, I'm gonna go gallery view here. Come on, there's gotta be some, are there any questions? No? Okay. You, guys can, you can unmute yourself and ask directly. I mean, David, this is Susan. They've asked questions kind of all along, but um, do you have any questions, people, about the workshop, what, what he's gonna paint, that kind of a thing? Hey, you know what I'm gonna do? Let me show you what we're gonna paint. I'll show you the photos. Oh, I know where they are. And all these came from um, Sketchy and their app museum there's one i can't find doo, doo, doo. and also during the workshop i talk about taking photographs which is very important okay and then we're, we're going to be doing let me put myself back on to speaker can Brenda, you spotlight me? Yeah, I will. Brenda, but before you start, Brenda, did you have a question? You have your hand raised. Yeah, hi, thank you. I've, I've loved your demo. I've been trying to follow along with a, paint, with a picture of my own dog. And okay. I'm finding it really difficult to resist the urge to color him in. You know, if, um, how do you manage to avoid using color? You're just using the background colors and, and the, the tone, but is it difficult to avoid using the color itself? I keep wanting to change it to look like my dog. No, don't do that. <laughs> what I'm working with, you know, since I put my mess around, you see a lot of it, you know, 
more than 50% is still there. So I'm being able to bring out the subject, i.e. the cat and the little girl, by now painting in those middle to darker values. Yeah, right. That's the trick. Yeah. The trick is to do the mess around with, don't go any further than a mid value. In fact, uh, okay, on a scale from one to 10, no, on a scale from zero to 10, zero being the white of the paper, 10 being the darkest darks you could possibly paint, the darkest values you can possibly paint. The mess around goes from zero, you know, you may have a little bit of the white of the paper showing through. It goes from zero to, to be on the safe side to number four. Number five would be an exact middle value. So you only want to get up to four. Maybe a few bits can be five. And that's it. And then when you bring out your subject, now you're working with values, let's say from five or six all the way up to 10. So this mess around, that, that is not a deep, deep, you know, like the, the greens I've been mixing on my palette. This is light. You can still see the white of the paper. Look at the blues. You can still see the white of the paper coming through. The yellows, you don't have to worry much about yellow because you'll never be able to get a deep, dark value with yellow because it's a light color to begin with. Actually, in the same with, with the opera, you can only get so dark. But what you don't want to do is you don't want to have opera and, and, and mix up some, some deep alizarin uh, red with it. Then you are going to get too dark. So all these values are to the left of, let's say five, six, the middle values. And then when you bring out whatever you're painting, now you're painting the values that are on the right side. Okay, I'm gonna have and another you go. <laughs> you res is that answering your question? It is, it's made it a lot clearer, thank you. I'm going to have another okay. go tomorrow, thank you. <laughs> and, and you know, you, you, and hold on, let me go back to gallery. What are you, what are yeah, you trying Brenda? to do? Oh. Well, I'll, I'll uh. Oh yeah, let's, let's take a look at it. Okay. Oh. So now, uh, so now I go back to speaker. <laughs> oh, there we go. There we go. Okay. Well, you know, it looks on the, it looks like on the face, You've left your original um, red. It looks like you had some yellow green. So, you, yeah. and, and I see blue on the back. Yeah, no, you're doing just fine. In fact, Brenda, here's a good way to start out. You do the mess around and then you only pick, and I haven't done it with mine, but you only pick one color to be your dark colors. Uh, okay. And you let the other colors just stay there. Or if some of those other colors want to be darker later on, you can go like, look, on this side, I had warm colors. So I stuck with warm colors in areas or in the eye here. And same with the mouth. Yes. Yeah. And all this just takes practice and you find your own way. But the mess around is a great way to start out. Yeah. I love it. I love it as a way to free up the picture. Thank yeah. you. No, you've done. That's a good start. Be happy. Okay. Thank you. Didn't, didn't somebody sing a song like that? Just be happy. So here's what we're going to do. I call this Ode to Joy. This is a fun mm -hmm. one. And then this one's called Mum's the Word. <laughs> and we're going to start all of these with mess arounds. And we're not going to go in with Payne's gray or uh, do a black cat. We're going to have some subtle dark values in there. I'm going to be teaching that. And this one's going to have all sorts of wonderful colors. And then the third one, and right now, let me see if I can find.
I may just have to show you the painting. Vicki, did you make him change the image? This is no, so I did not. <laughs> OK. We're going to be doing this one. Now, this has got less of the mess around. In fact, this painting, I got very, very muddy. We're going to be doing this. <laughs> So that's going to be another fun one. What did I name this one? I forget. Puppy, lo puppy love. Puppy love. Yes, puppy love. We're going to be doing puppy love. We're going to try and fit three in. We'll see how far we can get. Because again, you know, the painting can get fairly intensive. But what you'll have is you'll have my, in fact, I'm going to have to know fairly quickly. <laughs> in fact, it would help. If you want to sign up for this, l l let Vicki or Susan know before the day's out, because really what I've got to get, what I've got to send you um, is I've got to send you, and they have them, they'll send them to you, uh, not me. They have, you, you, you'll get the reference photograph, you'll get the outline tracing, and, uh, and then all that gets traced on your paper, and you'll want to try and do that before before we start. We just had a sign up, um, Carol, and Vicki's already sent her all the stuff, so. Oh, oh, already, wow. Yeah, so it's easy, easy, easy to do if you'd like to easy, sign up. Easy, easy. In fact, we're going to start this first one and we'll break for lunch. And so if, you're, if you sign up like today, either you get all this done by, by tomorrow morning, or you'll have a chance during the lunch break to maybe start this, because we'll be doing this in the afternoon. These are the two primary ones that I want to do. And if we can fit in the money, puppy love, we'll do that. Well, the workshop's three days. And we got three days, yes. So there's plenty of time. That's true. It could be done. Something could be done between Monday and Tuesday. So no right. big deal. I'll let you guys handle that. David, this is okay. Susan again. I have a question. Yes. If for some reason somebody absolutely wanted to do their own image, um, some pet people image, could they do that as well? Absolutely. Just okay. like, just like, do I have the name right, Brenda? Yeah. Yeah, just like Brenda did. Yeah, they can do their own image. Great. And then you'll see during the workshop, we periodically take breaks because as you know, we need to take breaks. I've talked a lot about that. And then I, I, I sit back and we all sit back and I take turns. Uh, you don't have to show up a uh, hold up a painting, but I, 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 would, I, I would hope you would if this is a workshop, we're not expecting any masterpieces, you're learning. Um, and then I give, uh, I give advice. And I'm very honest about my advice in a very nice way. That is Aren't true. I, Aren't I, Susan? You yes, are. You are very. Yes. Um, so David, some, David, someone asked if you would post your this finished painting that you've been working on. When when you're done with it, would you post it somewhere so they could see it? Yes. Um, I'll send it to you. Okay. And then I'll also, um, it, it'll probably end up on my, you know, this comes out good. It'll probably end up on my Facebook page, uh, uh, maybe Instagram. Okay, yeah. great. Thank you. And then, and then to, and then of course, to anybody that signs up, you know, you'll have three recordings. And right. I'll post my finished paintings as well for you to distribute. Okay, that is so, correct also. For somebody, um, for tomorrow, you talked about doing the mess around first or sometimes the drawing first. Do you want people to go ahead and, and put the drawing down or are we going to do mess Wait. around? Oh boy, that is a, no, I no. we're going to be starting from scratch for each one. No, we're okay. going to do, do the mess arounds first. And I think I'm going, because I am the captain of the ship, right? I, at least for now, yes. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I'm going to exert my 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 rights for being a ship's captain, 
and we're going to do mess arounds without the tracings. Okay. So I, I'm, I'm trying to figure this out. So if we do that, and then we're going to start that, that Ode to Joy. Um, yeah, we'll do, the, we'll do the three mess arounds. For, see, this is the first time I've taught this workshop. I probably haven't thought it out far enough. But now that I'm thinking, we'll do the three mess arounds first. And then um, by that time, the first mess around should be dry. And then everybody can trace on top of that. So this is the first time I've been like on the ball and have all my tracings done. <laughs> That's okay. I have more paper. Yeah. On the other hand, I'm thinking, how long is it going to take for all of us to trace? How much time is that going to take? Your, your drawings are fairly simple. They are so, simple. Yeah, I would think it wouldn't take that long. Okay. Susan, I'm going to, this is something, because normally um, everybody has everything ready to go. They've done their mess arounds. They trace on top. I've done my mess around, I've traced on top. And then, by the way, for all of you who have never taken my workshop, and I, I'm probably not too dissimilar to anybody, any of the other teachers, we go step by step. So you do not get ahead of me. Sometimes I see people painting and they get ahead of me and I say, stop, stop, because I'm teaching you things. Don't go, don't take your own route. Um, so I'm a little worried about how long it's going to take for people to trace. What do you think about that, Susan? I, I personally, I, the drawings are fairly simple. So I think it shouldn't take more than 10 minutes to, to draw this. Yeah, it shouldn't take you know, that. They're gonna trace it. Yeah, and it's yeah. just tracing. So, right. okay, let's do that. This is gonna be something new for me. And I always like something new. Yeah, and they could even do it, you know, over the lunch you know, if they wanted to. Yeah, they could do that as well. And the thing I like about this is I would prefer to, to have them not be influenced by the tracing whatsoever. Well, I guess that'll be for everybody but Vicky, so. But uh -huh. Vicky. Well, Vicky's a, Vicky, you weren't that influenced. You'd let loose, right? I've seen I can let that, loose. So yeah. I'm not too worried about Vicky. Okay, all right, well, that sounds good. Does anybody yeah. else have and any Vicky questions? Has never won. And Vicki, you, you, you can follow us again with more mess arounds. Yes, you I will. You can still follow us. We're not, Absolutely. And then you'll have those others for your second set of studies. Perfect. There You're you golden. Go. You're golden, yes. Vicki. All right. <laughs> All, All right. right. So, I'm going to do a little more work here. All right. So final, final is do not hour. draw your drawings. Pardon? The final is do not trace drawings in advance. Yes, that's the final. Okay, awesome. In fact, has anybody done that yet? Hopefully not. Well, we don't know because not all the uh, registrants are here, I assume. So we'll just let that go. Yeah, I mean, uh, Vicki could email everyone and have tell them that that's the preferred method. If they have, oh well. Okay. Yeah, they have oh well, and they can start all over again, like Vicky's going to do. We'll see. We'll see how this goes. That's right. <laughs> um, now on this, how's this nose? It's still a, a little wet. What if I just gave it a very delicate and tough? Oh, good. Okay, I'm going to finish off the nose now. And just think about it. This is all done with flat brushes. So much fun. And I would advise you go to YouTube and uh, put in the search box, Stan Miller. Yep. And, and, and I would advise you look at the one, he does a black male subject, do that. And the funny thing is, is he's working on an eighth. I usually work on quarter sheets, like, um, I'm working a little smaller on this, but this is a quarter sheet. It's it's um, it's eleven. It's eight. What is, now? Why have I blanked out? What's a quarter sheet? 
eight and a half by 11, I believe. No, I don't, something tells me that's not right. It's a quarter of a full sheet, which is 22 by 30 inches. It's yes. closer to 11 by 17. No, 11 by seven and a half is a quarter. Yeah, you know what? I've got a, I've got a ruler here. <laughs> For all of us uh, people that don't know our math, and I'm one of them, it is, no, it can't be that one. Hold on. Here's a quarter sheet. Yeah, it is 11, it's just too simple, 11 by 15, 22 by 30. Vicki, you know better than I am. <laughs> yeah, 11 by 15. So he does an eighth. And the funny thing is, is he's holding the paper. He's got a little cardboard backup but he's holding, he's actually holding the paper in his hand while he's painting. But he did this years ago. I think now he has a tabletop and a, cam and a, 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 a camera arm like I've got. But even as old as they are, they're beautiful demonstrations. Okay. Okay, here's an example where I've got some colors. I'm going to follow those colors and just deepen them a little. Because I want her colors, I want her color to be white or to be a light value. So in order to do that, I need to deepen these, this area of her dress that's below her collar. I'm doing a really rich green because this is gonna help pop out the cat's paws. Okay, and then same over here. Look how this is really going to bring out the leg and the paws. Look at that. In fact, I can even deepen it a little more. I'll put a shadow here. Look at that. Oh, wow. Look at that. Okay. So now we come down and I'm going to have to add a little more yellow because I don't want it too dark. Come down like this. Look how I move my brush around. You don't want to paint like a house painter in one direction. And by painting diagonally, vertically, horizontally, You'll get some, and I, I, I love um, these little areas of white, which are called holidays. Now we're coming into the, the yellow area. And I'm gonna, for the sake of time, I'm gonna cheat a little. I happen to have some pre-mixed yellow on my palette. So excuse me. I'm going to actually use a pre-mixed orange. But I could have mixed it myself with opera and yellow. Get some orange here. We definitely want it darker. Hey, let's pop some in there like that. Then we're coming back into some opera. And I may even make these call, uh, these call the collar white with a chalk marker later on. Um, and then that segues into lavender. And I think I'm also going to take some of that lavender and darken her neck area a little bit more. And 
there. Okay. Yeah, I like these darker colors. It's really pushing out her face. Um, I'm adding some white on the cheek and above the cat's mouth. But right here. So that's balancing out some of, and you can also put color on top of that white once it's dry. And that white dissolves, you can blend. It's just exactly like gouache. And gouache is indeed watercolor. The only thing that separates the gouache with watercolor is the medium's got an opaque mineral in it. So it goes on more opaque. Okay. Hey, maybe a little bit of white here. There. And you know, I'm thinking what would be fun is have the cat have a, a pink tongue. Let me do the pink tongue in chalk. That would be fun. So I have magenta here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay down some magenta. Look how strong that is. Now that's a little too much, so I'm going to mix it with white. So that goes right on top. Look at that. With these two colors, I'm matching perfectly. And then if I want to give it a little bit of a highlight, let's get this white going. I, I, I press the pen on the palm of my hand. This is a great way to get messy, just to get the ink going. And then there. So I have a modulation going from a very light pink to a slightly darker pink. In fact, I'm going to put the darkest part right down here at the bottom of the tongue. There. Yeah, I think that's pretty cute. I like that idea. By the way, if I have them, I don't know where I put them. You can buy sets of all the colors you'll possibly want in chalk markers. Okay, now I'm going to go back and let me get my, my painting here and I'm going to cover up the girl. So there, now you can see the, the little kitten. And I, I just love doing this i love i love contrasting darks against lights there's at the bottom of his feet right here where the feet is resting on her her dress it's just a little bit of dark there i'm going to add more dark here just still a little wet but that's working to my advantage look look how his paw is now really sitting down on her shoulder Let's pull off a little paint right here with a dry, thirsty brush. Here. And get a little bit darker here. And then into the paw area.
and the cat's got a little dark spot here. And another little dark spot here. And one coming up here. And I'm following the contour of the leg. I'm doing a nice, nice curve there. And then a little bit darker on the top. So now I, I, I'm looking, I'm looking at the cat. Oh, I see. It's a little dark there, and then there's another dark tiger marking starting right here and heading down the side of the face. Kind of disappearing into the cat's fur. Let's get this a little bit darker. A bit of dark value here. You know, basically what I'm doing is I'm putting, I'm putting down the final the final touches. Oh, and there's just right above the smile here, there's some darker fur. There. Um, I don't know if I have a signal uniball. Oh, here's one. Let me make sure this is this this is great for whiskers. I don't know if you can read it. Uniball, signal uniball. Ah, let's see if I can get some whiskers going. Mm. No, maybe I should use a bigger pen. There we go. Some whiskers. You can see right, right here, especially the whiskers going across that shadow area. Okay. Now there's a little bit of a highlight right here. In fact, I can show you on this bigger one. It's right here. I think that it's subtle, but I think it's important. So with a flat brush, I can pull that out. Yeah, that works. Oh, and I said I was going to, 
I, I, you know, I don't think it's totally necessary, but I'm going to do it. I can always paint over because I want to show you. Okay, I'm gonna. There it is. It's hiding from me. Get the ink going. I don't know how much is going to show up on your um, on your computers, but I've highlighted that just a little bit, and then I want a little bit right here. That may show up a little bit better. And a little bit right here. Yeah. And I also want to, you don't see the whites of her, her eye on this side. It totally disappears into shadow. There we go. That's, that, that's, more, that's more realistic. And then let's put some highlights right on this eye with the white. Uh, I didn't have to do this, but I just wanted to show you, and it certainly didn't hurt it. That off. That ain't going. Oh, I'm going to show you some blending. So I'm going to take my a wet brush. And soften up those edges so it just blends nicely there. And then I'm going to do the same thing here. This is going to be more dramatic. You'll see the blending. Wet brush. There. Okay. You know what? I think, oh, one more thing and then I'm done. Now, I don't consider this completely done. What I'll do is at some point, maybe later tonight, I'll come back and put the true finishing touches and, and make any corrections that I, I may want. But I consider this pretty darn close to being done. I want, I want to soften up the nose here, get a little bit of tone there. A little bit under the nose. there and how about a little hot spot right here
and they'll blend it. Yeah, this works exactly like watercolor paint. In fact, if I didn't like that, I could I could pull off all this white. The the color underneath will stay because it's had a uh, it's had a time to dry and the pigments have attached themselves to the paper. So unless you really scrub hard, you can slowly with a wet brush take off this white, but it won't affect the color underneath. So that's that's something that's cool to to realize. Oh, I know what's not. I I think I want a little more. I want some highlights. And I definitely want a highlight here on this tooth. And I want a highlight here. And a little bit more of a highlight right there. That's really popping out the teeth. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, I am now done. I hope you got a few, few good pointers on that and you've got the uh, you've got the recording. Enjoy. Thank it was you. fantastic. Thank you so much, David. And thank you You're everybody welcome. For, for coming. So we will see you tomorrow and the workshop starts at 9 a.m. So I'll be here a little bit early to let you in, David. Okay, um, which uh, say about uh, quarter to no, uh, quarter to nine? Yeah, I'll probably be there a little earlier than that, just because that's how I roll. But yes, by quarter to nine for sure. Oh, good. Okay, perfect. All right. All right, and it's a gorgeous painting. Thank you, David. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thanks everybody for viewing. Thank Adios. Bye, Bye now.